Hi, my name is Rob. The Quicksilver Pro Gold Coast just wrapped up and we saw some spectacular surfing, eventually leading to Kelly Slater winning it once again, this time at Kira. While the surfing was incredible, I want to focus on a paddle battle that happened in round four between Kelly Slater and BD Durbage. Now, both athletes are in great shape, but BD is taller, has longer arms, and was on a longer surfboard. Yet Kelly uses some stroke techniques, some keystroke techniques that I'd like to point out. And I want to show you how it relates to swimming and how you can practice and use them for your own surfing. As we watch this clip, there are three things that stand out to me. Head, elbow, and roll. Starting with the first one, head. Notice the differences between the movement of Kelly's head and of Beatty's head. Kelly keeps his head stationary, while Beatty's head is rotating from side to side, imbalanced, trying harder and harder to reach and dig. So a quick lesson from swimming is this. Swimmers imagine that there is a straight line from the tip of their heads down to their tailbones. They rotate their body on this axis and try to reduce any yawing, which is the right-left motion of the body and the head. One of the key aspects of this is to keep the head still unless you're breathing, in which you roll your head when your body rolls, keeping that axis in alignment. So now back to Slater. You can see his head stays still. It's up, which is different from swimming regular freestyle, but the head stays looking forward and is still. Beatty's head is all over the place, causing him and his board to yaw or move left or right ever so subtly. And anytime that happens, you lose forward momentum in the water you get off that straight line axis. Hence, he has to work harder to cover the same distance. We are looking to optimize stroke length or the number of feet or meters you move forward per stroke you take. So on to the second key element, the elbow. Watch Slater's elbow stay high as he begins the catch phase to his stroke. Beatty's is okay for some strokes, but you can actually see it drop on quite a few, especially on his left arm. So here's swimming lesson number two. Maintain a high elbow. In swimming, once the arm is extended out, without breaking the wrist and keeping the elbow high, you begin the catch phase. However, the power of the stroke when swimming head down freestyle the power of the stroke is on the second half of the stroke. So you keep your elbow high as your catch begins and about a little before halfway through the catch phase the power part of the stroke begins and that holds until you get to the recovery part of the stroke. In surfing paddling however the power portion of the catch phase is actually in a different place. If you're on a prone paddle board, or even on a thicker long board, or, or really any craft in which your body is out of the water, the power portion of the stroke is actually in the first half of the catch phase. On a short board, the power portion of the catch is a combination of the power portion of paddling a paddle board, which is mostly the first half of the catch and the power portion in swimming regular freestyle, mostly the middle and second half of the catch. And this is because on a short board, you're not completely out of the water, but you're not completely in the water either. Watching Slater stroke, his elbow stays high from the beginning, which helps him retain more of the first half of the power range than Beatty, whose elbow is low in the beginning, even though he brings it up halfway through the stroke. Beatty is actually paddling more like he's swimming freestyle and more of the power is in the middle to the back of his stroke when he drops that elbow. 
because he's on this short board, he misses out on most of that first half, that first part of the power in the catch by not having his elbow high. When the elbow is high, the forearm and the hand act together perpendicular to the ocean floor, giving the surfer the highest power in the stroke. It's like an extended hand with your forearm and your hand. The longer you have your arm in this power portion of the catch phase, the faster you'll go. Third element, the roll. As with the first point in keeping the hit still, the roll has to do with that imaginary line that goes from your head to your tailbone. Just as in swimming, you want to roll your body along this axis, reducing the yawing motion or that right-left motion, that lateral right-left motion, as much as possible, minimizing that as much as possible. However, when surfing, you don't want to roll as much as in swimming. Oh, it's pretty obvious why that is, because if you roll as much as you do in swimming, regular freestyle swimming, you'll fall off your board. The roll from rail to rail for surfing paddling is more subtle. What it's doing is providing you the greatest reach forward without causing that yawing motion, that left-right motion of the body and the board. So with the roll, it extends your shoulder and your arms out, and your el as your elbow stays high, you get a longer and deeper paddle in the power portion of your stroke. So there are the three key techniques that you should also use when paddling your shortboard. Head, elbow, roll. Head still, elbow high, subtle roll, rail to rail. So how can I practice this when I'm not surfing? Well, the best training technique in the pool is head up freestyle. Head up freestyle incorporates all of these aspects, all of these elements, and mimics a shortboard's resistance in the water. And you know more on the issue of water resistance in a, in a later post. So take a look at the position of head up freestyle. <laughs> Looks familiar, right? Looks like paddling on a short board just without the board. Heads up, still, and looking forward. High elbows throughout the power portion of the stroke. Note that in head up freestyle swimming, the power portion of the stroke is the same as on a short board. The power portion is more the front half of the stroke all the way through to almost the end portion of the catch phase. The reason is that your body is submerged lower in the water than with head down freestyle where there is much more glide to the stroke in the first half of the catch. The keys to head up freestyle, head still looking forward, high elbows, higher stroke rate, kind of like when you're paddling into a wave you have a high stroke rate and when you're paddling back out to the lineup your stroke rate is a little bit lower. In head up freestyle high high stroke rate and you're kicking you're kicking to keep the rest of your body body closer to the surface of the water and that's why in the X swim for surfers training program after you finish the building the base week and the interval training and get into the surf specific training week that's why there's a lot more head up freestyle it's more surf specific so there you have it next time you're on a short board try it out Keep your head still, looking forward. Keep your elbow high in the catch phase. And do a subtle roll from rail to rail as you reach out. Practice it in the pool. Practice head up freestyle in the pool. Either on your own, or you can learn more about the X Swim for Surfers training program at www.xswimforsurfers.com. I really hope you enjoyed this analysis. I welcome questions, comments, ideas, anything that drives the enjoyment of surfing and of fitness more. Again, my name is Rob. I look forward to hearing from you, and I'll see you in the water.